Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode we play around with Nick Software ColorFX Pro. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 105 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France and welcome to my YouTube channel. I make two tutorials per week and if you want to get them for free, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here. And if you want to get the raw file of this podcast and all the prior podcasts, all you have to do, click here to subscribe to my newsletter. And this way you will get a special link with all the raw files from all my podcasts. We're talking hundreds of raw files. Okay, guys, also remember that uh, uh, you only have three days left to get 40% off my entire store. So go check it out. Also, at the end of this podcast, you will have a presentation of my new course Photoshop for Photographer. All right, last week I showed you how to do HDR during daylight without a tripod and using the latest version of Photomatix. Check it out if you like this type of effect. This week I want to try to show you some of the effects you can do with ColorFX Pro. We're going to go for a little foggy high key landscape effect, that's the final result, but I'm going to show you some of the uh, effects that ColorFX Pro has to offer. There's a lot to cover and I'm only giving you a little introduction of this very powerful plugin, but here it is. All right, mesdames and messieurs, so we're going to talk today about some uh, cool plugins that works with Lightroom and Photoshop. And this is the uh, Nick collection. And specifically today, we're going to talk about um, ColorFX Pro, this one. It's a very cool plugin that's got all kind of effects and it's uh, uh, the good thing about it is this plugin used to be very, very expensive. There's a whole bunch of plugins for black and white and colors, and they were like five, seven hundred dollars or something. And Google bought them a few months back, and now you can get all the plugins for one hundred and forty-nine dollars, which is really a steal because they're really awesome plugins. Let me show you, uh, give you a couple of examples. So this is a long exposure shot I shot in Clearwater Beach, Florida, uh, last year when I was there, and. Um, it's kind of cool, but I want to give it like a little foggy effect and it's hard to do in Lightroom, even in Photoshop, but it's pretty easy to do in ColorFX Pro. So although I could do hours of tutorials on that plugin, I'm just going to give you a little intro on it. So first, uh, I'm going to do my usual stuff. I'm going to open up the shadows and I'm not going to bring down the highlights on this one because I want to give it like a sort of a high key fitting to it. I'm going to boost the exposure a little bit. Uh, I'm going to bring the blacks a bit down and on the white balance, on the white balance, I'm going to go for maybe cloudy or shade. I want to give it a bit of a warm fitting to it. Yeah, okay, cloudy I think is kind of nicer. I'm going to boost a little bit of clarity, but not so much because I, I want to give it like a, you know, a very high key landscape type of effect and maybe boost the vibrance a bit, you know. And you know, I was kind of bored with this photo, so I said, why not? Let's take it in Color Refix Pro. So right click, edit, Color Refix Pro 4. So edit with a copy of Lightroom adjustments. Absolutely, we want to take it from there. And uh, so Color Refix Pro is a whole bunch of filters and special effects that you can apply to your photos. And um, I'm not going to go into all the effects because it's just would be a few hours of uh, you know of training so the way it works is on on the left well you've got this little button here which is going to take the panel the left panel off and on same thing for here you know you got this little panel thing and um, so you've got like landscapes wedding architecture fa favorite is the one I put in favorite nature portrait travel all this is different filters I'm just going to show you a couple I'm going, to sh I'm going to go into my favorites. And so if you want to put anything in favorites, let's say you're in portraits and you like something, you just click on the star here and it becomes yellow and you go into favorites. Okay, so for example, the detail extractor. Now, what I love what the detail extractor does. What it does is that it ext extracts details, like it says. So the first sliders is going to be the power of the, you know, of the effect. And basically, it's going to sort of give an illustrative look to your photo. It's really cool if you want to do that. Now, I just want to use it to extract details, and I actually only want to use it on the foreground of the fo of the photo because I want to make a contrast between the foreground, which is very detailed, and the background that's going to be very foggy to uh, to even put more attention on the foggy aspect of the photo. So, 
when you have something that you like, what you can do is just click here on this, what we call control points, like the plus here, and I'm gonna click here, and what that's gonna do is that it's gonna take out the effect everywhere but in, the, in that circle. You see I have a circle there. As I make it bigger, the, uh, the, the detail extractor is being applied to a bigger space, to a bigger part of the photo. As I make it smaller, it's only being applied to the foreground here, and that's what I want. And I can lower the opacity of the, of the filter or make it higher. I wanna make it higher. So what I did here, if you wanna see before, and after, all I did was bring more details to the foreground of the photo, okay? So that's cool. And that's what the control points, they call that the U technology. And uh, it's really cool. It's a real cool technology. Um, I could even boost the saturation, uh, you know, but it's only gonna boost the saturation here where there is the, the circle. So then I can click on add filter and I'm ready to add another filter. And this time, I'm gonna go into landscape, I believe it is. Uh, landscape, and we have graduated fog. I'm actually gonna click the yellow star so that it's in my favorite for next time. And I'm gonna click on graduated fog. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring fog to the photo. And so opacity, the first slider, is gonna make it, you know, no fog, 100% a lot of fog, okay? So I'm gonna put it around 80. You have, you can click here and you have different type of fog strengths or you know just look you know with your eyes what you like the most now blending is basically going to change a bit the gradient you know like if i go totally left the fog is only going to be applied to the top of the photo and as i go down to the right it's going to be applied everywhere i actually only want it to be applied to the upper part of the photo you know i just want to give the idea there is a bit of fog there you know uh, vertical shift is gonna is same thing you know you just you define where it's being applied. You can make a rotation, which I don't think is a good idea on this one, because uh, I want it to be pretty aligned with the horizontal, you know, with the horizon. And uh, yeah, that's about it. On this one, I'm not gonna use the control points because I like what it did. Now let me show you before and after the graded fog. So, you know, I'm trying to do a high key sort of photo, you know, very detailed here and very foggy on top. You know, it's just the effect I'm going for. But, you know, I find it's lacking of, um, of colors or, you know, and you can try different things. Uh, for example, uh, okay, so I'm gonna click on add filter. You can go into some crazy stuff like, um, like uh, let's see, what do I have? Nature, portraits, bleach bypass. That's a crazy effect. Bleach bypass is gonna make it, everything is, is gonna be very desaturated and very grungy, you know? But you know, I might like that just here in front again, not on the rest of the photo, so I can add a, add a filter. Click here, oh sorry, not add a filter, I made a mistake. Let me go back on it, add a control point, the plus here, click here. So you know, it's, it only does it uh, on the foreground, you know. And check it out, before the bleach bypass, after the bleach bypass. You know, if you think it's too strong, well I can bring back some saturation, uh, make it brighter or, you know, make it brighter or less, you know. And uh, yeah, but I like, you know, the idea to have this very contrasty, you know. So that's kind of cool. And now I'm gonna click on add filter. So you can just, you know, try things around and add things up, you know. It's a complete creation process. And that's what I like about it, it's creation. Okay, one that I really dig is uh, in favorite, it's called the bicolor user define. Let me click on it. And all it does is that, uh, I mean, you can do it in, you know, in Lightroom, but I don't know, I find it easier there. Uh, I'm gonna pick, you know, lower color, upper color. For the lower color, I'm actually gonna pick, I'm gonna click here on the, on the color wheel and go into the blues and take a bright blue. When you turn that off, okay, it puts it there. And then on the, uh, on the top color, the upper color, I'm gonna go for a very uh, warm color, like sort of reddish, something like this, okay? And then I'm gonna play around with the blends. See how that works. Yeah, make that a bit smaller. Uh, let's vertical shift. Yeah, I wanna make the blue very, yeah. I wanna make the blue very, like, just the bottom part of the photo and the rest kind of red. Okay, so maybe now I can change my reds and uh, add a bit of uh, green. So I go towards the yellow, for example, maybe a little bit. That's kind of cool. 
that's kind of cool, but it's too much yellow. I'm gonna back it down a little bit. You know, it's really like you have to play around with it. And I can lower the opacity or just increase it, you know. Uh, you know, I can make it sort of natural, something like this. Or, uh, you know, I can try something else, you know, I can try, I don't know, I'm just playing around and taking some like strong purple, uh, you know, and uh, just lowering our, the opacity. I was, I'm just trying to get back some colors in the photo. B color defined before and after, before and after. Just trying to get some colors back in there, you know. But I like the fog look that it gives, you know, and the fact that there's a lot of details there and a lot of fog. But the process is really endless. You know, this is just a little intro in that amazing plugin. So, okay, that's it for now. I'm gonna click on save and it's gonna bring back the photo in Lightroom. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit more in Lightroom because I always love to double process. You know, whenever I do something in Photoshop or into a plugin and get it back into Lightroom, well, I still do some final touches there. Okay, so here we are, boom. So that was the original photo with the retouching we did, and that's after all the feeders we did, you know, we gave it that fall look, you know, this uh, 500px, you know, 90.5 look, you know what I mean? Uh, for, the, for those who are on 500px, they would understand. Okay, I might open up the shadows. I just, you know, want to make it a bit brighter, bring down the blacks, so just we still have some contrast, and, you know, I cannot help it than just to use some uh, of the brush here and bring back some yellows maybe here you know, so that we have something which is really warm there. Okay, the whole idea is I wanted to go reverse. You know, usually I have a very uh, strong sky with very uh, strong clouds and everything. I wanted to go the other way a little bit for once. You know, I wanted to try to see what happens. Okay, I'm taking out some of the magenta that I put in that brush and maybe adding a bit of saturation. Just want a bit, yeah, a bit warmer. Check it out before the brush. After the brush. Ah, you know what? I don't think I like it so much. I don't think I like it. I think, anyways, the process is endless. It was just a little intro on the, on this, but I kind of like the, sort of like making it, you know, a very high key uh, landscape. You know, usually this is done the, with, um, you know what, I actually don't like the brush. I'm sorry, but I just don't like it. So I'm just gonna select it, just take it out. You know, but as everything, it's really a try and error process. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm actually not gonna make it so bright. I want, yeah, just get to give it this sort of foggy look. Yeah. And uh, well, I th hope you like that. Um, and usually, as I usually do, you know, I would probably wait like 10, 15 minutes and come back to it and see if, if I can add other things. But I just wanna show you that you have this cool plotting. You can work directly within Lightroom with it and give some cool effect. That was just like the fog effect. Okay, guys, hope you learned something and you like this. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that I have a new course coming up. It is called Photoshop for Photographer. It's my longest course so far, over five hours long. And the whole purpose is to really give you all the tools you need with Photoshop for retouching your photos from a photographer viewpoint. Photoshop is a huge software and there's a lot of things you can do with it. We're gonna look at it from a photographer viewpoint. The first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna use Camaro and we're gonna retouch several projects. You can see some of the before and afters here coming on screen. And I'm gonna show you a simple example at first and then we're gonna go into more and more complex raw file editing until you really get the raw file looking like you want. Next, we're gonna go into layer, mask and blending modes. To do that, I'm gonna show you how to replace some skies so you really master the different types of blending modes and the different types of masking options that we have and how the layers really work with Photoshop. That is very important for you to understand. Then we are gonna do some digital blending. Now, digital blending is an amazing technique for when you shoot the sky and when you shoot the, you know, your foreground and to mix them up to get a, all the dynamic range and a very natural result. Then we're gonna jump into HDR. And on HDR, we're gonna check the different techniques available today. We're gonna to do HDR using Photoshop and then we're gonna do HDR using 32-bit files and tone mapping in Camaro, which is one of my preferred way today because it gives a lot more natural result. Then I'm gonna show you how to make a very HDR illustrative look with one single file. Next, we're gonna go into black and white. 
and I'm going to show you two techniques to do black and white. One complete in camera row and the other one in Photoshop for very dramatic results. Then we're going to jump into removing elements and I'll show you the different tools that Photoshop has to take out and remove unwanted elements in your photo. That happens a lot when we take photography. Next, we're going to jump into panoramas and I'm going to show you my whole workflow on doing panoramas. Next, I'm going to show you all kinds of small special effects from uh, simulating a very nice bouquet on a photo, from doing tilt shift photography, trying to mimic an 85 millimeter 1.4 lens to have a very uh, small depth of field, uh, how to explode details in a photo, all kinds of small tricks I've gathered over the years to give your photo an extra look. And last, we're going to put everything into practice to create one composite using all the things we have learned so far, and that would be the final tutorial. So I hope you do check it out. It's really all I know that I've put into one big tutorial on Photoshop. Photoshop for photographer. I hope you do check it out. All right, guys, I hope you liked this episode and that you will check out my Photoshop for photographer full course, and I'll see you in the next episode. Au revoir.